We're building a city, we're building a city, digging and pounding, we're working all together, building for the teacher, the milkman, the butcher. Hello friends, and welcome back to the Daily Compulsion, your home for vintage Lego. Today I have another haul video for you. This time, the package was purchased from a seller on eBay and should contain a classic Lego set, literally dripping with soul, set number 6375-2, Gas Station. I will record myself opening the package, removing its contents, and then discussing and talking about its contents. I hope that you find this enjoyable and informative. Here's the package. Despite what I said last time about it being uncommon for people to seal packages with duct tape, I guess it's my lucky day because here's another package sealed with duct tape again. Luckily this time I brought the appropriate tools. I'll be careful not to cut into my actual item by holding the blade sideways. Always cut away from yourself. The box was a little crushed, so I was kind of worried that the inside box would be crushed as well. But it looks like this seller did do his due diligence and take care to package this relatively appropriately. The reason I bought this set is because obviously it's a classic Lego town set from the early 80s, from 1980 I believe, and when I was younger I had a collection of Lego that had at least parts of this set in it, and like I've said in other videos, I'm a big castle fan, but um, you know, I, lo I love classic Lego, and there are a handful of classic town sets that are on my list. Um, to acquire and this is one of them. Um, I wonder what this is. It's written extra. Interesting. It has three by two slopes. Thank you. I do plan on creating another video where I explain my relationship with Lego and my collecting habits and why I purchase the things that I do. But for now, just know that, like was said earlier, this set is maximum soul and that's why I acquired it. I don't even know how this opens. I thought the flap was supposed to lift up, but I guess that's not right. No, the flap definitely doesn't lift up like on some of the other vintage sets. Is this supposed to? Yes, it's supposed to slide out. I'm a genius. Who is the man at figuring things out? Okay, nice. Again, like I said uh, in a previous video, I'm not like some collector nerd that needs to have the box for every single set that I purchase. But it sure is nice when it comes. Um, this is awesome. And this set actually even had the instructions. <laughs> Very thin. There's only a handful of pages here. Is this even the whole instructions? I guess it is. Wow. How can they pack so much soul into such few pages? Comes with a nice classic road base plate, which I already have plenty of these, but uh, 
nice to not have to get another one. And this, it's an 8x32 base plate. These didn't come in a heck of a lot of sets, so that's fun. And here's the parts. Partially disassembled. The sticker parts are in good condition, according to the listing. Nice. This is exciting. There's even the original sticker sheet with some stickers still on it. That's crazy. And one right here, too. Fascinating. Casually toss those aside. Car that I need to take apart. I like it when people take apart the sets before mailing them to me. It kind of helps me suspend the knowledge that somebody built and played with the set before I did. Man, gas pump number four. Pretty good condition. Here's the piece that I remember from my childhood. Stickered assembly, three one by six bricks covered by a Exxon sticker on both sides. That's when Exxon had a cool logo. All right, um, so the next step is to, you know, take apart uh, the set and inventory all the pieces. Three minifigures there. That corresponds with what's on the box. Uh, next step, take apart all the pieces and make sure they're all there and um, then leave the seller good feedback. One thing I would like to point out also is this helpful instruction right here, which we also saw on the box for the castle set. Use this box for storage. It's like Lego was warning people about how much these boxes would be worth in the future. I have finished inventorying the set. As you can see, its entire contents, with the exception of the base plates of course, fits inside this quart-sized bag. One of my main concerns going into this set was the stickers. I spoke about the stickered assemblies in my last video, and this set certainly has a lot of them. These gas pumps that you see here are creatively made up of several different pieces with stickers slapped over them. The entire pump is actually two different stickered assemblies. The top section with the pump number and the word Exxon on it, and the bottom section which just shows a simple red rectangle. Of course, I'm not going to take these apart just to verify that all the pieces are there because that would damage the stickers. I had to refer to the instructions to count out which pieces should actually appear there to make sure that they were included with the set. When I'm inventorying a set that I've recently purchased or a set that I'm trying to piece together, the way that I do that is I go to bricklink.com, I enter the set number, I click search, and I locate the entry for that set. Under each set, there's a section called My Wanted List, and underneath that, there's a link that says Part Out, where it enables you to add all of those parts that are on the inventory of the set to a new wanted list. When looking at the inventory entry of any given set on BrickLink, BrickLink helpfully lists stickered pieces as counterparts in the set's inventory, but it does not give you the option to select the counterparts when utilizing this part out function to create a new wanted list, nor does it separately list the pieces that make up a stickered assembly, at least not that I have seen. I could be mistaken and these features actually exist, so please let me know if I'm wrong. Anyway, all of the necessary stickers needed to build the set are already applied to the parts and almost all are in very good condition for a 42 year old set. The other thing that's really amazing, as I mentioned before, is that there's these two sticker sheets included with some stickers still on them. Seeing that they are in such good condition, I initially thought that they might be reproductions, but it does not appear that they are. 
As you can see, both have their identifying number printed in the lower left corner. The sticker sheet on the left is definitely the one that belongs to this set. The other one is noticeably brighter, and the Exxon logo is slightly different. So, doing a search on BrickLink of the sticker sheet number 196245, it shows that it belongs to set number 6696, Exxon Fuel Tanker, which came out in 1984, and that explains the brightness and the logo change. Now, of course, I feel strangely compelled to acquire that set, as it would make a nice companion to this one. And also, forgive me for stating the obvious, but once I build this Exxon gas station and place it into my city, how will the gas station provide gasoline to the motorists in my fine city if there is no Exxon fuel tanker to supply the fuel? So I know that you're watching this saying, The Daily Compulsion, please tell me, just how complete was this set that was advertised as 100% complete? Well, I'm glad you asked, because this segues into an interesting topic. I reached out to the seller to ask him if there is a story behind this set. I am still waiting to hear back. But this particular set looks to be one that was incomplete and acquired by someone who filled in the missing pieces with pieces from their own collection. There were not the usual mistakes of including the newer bluish light gray pieces instead of the old original light grays, but it was quite clear that some of these pieces were not what I have heard called period specific. Let me show you what I mean by that. This topic could and should be a video unto itself, but I will try to briefly cover it right now. To the untrained layman's eye, these pairs of parts probably look exactly the same. However, to the obsessive and discerning Lego enjoyer, they are drastically different. First, let us look at these white 2x2 two two bricks, and then let's flip them over. BrickLink actually differentiates between these two pieces. The one on the left is BrickLink part number 3003 OLD, enlisted as brick 2x2 two two without inside supports. The one on the right is simply part number 3003, described as brick 2x2. Two two. Why they didn't call the first one part number 3003 and the second one part number 3003 NEW is beyond me, but whatever. You can see the inside supports mentioned are two lines of extra plastic on the inside walls of the newer brick. Moving on, here are two 2x3 two plates in black. I can assure you the one on the right is black. I have just positioned it so that the light reflects in a way that we can actually read what's printed on the underside of the piece. When we're looking at the tops of them, just like everything else, they look the same, but looking at the undersides, again, we see differences here. Now, according to an interesting article on Brickset.com, Brickset says that LEGO started printing what they call the design numbers on their pieces around 1985. Now, this gas station set is from 1980, so none of the pieces should have those. The 2x3 plate here on the left has nothing printed on the underside, so I feel that this is definitely a period-appropriate part. The one on the right is an example of a much newer version, as we can see the Lego logo and the part number, as well as this 03-48, which I am told is the batch number, which could be used by the Lego company if they ever needed to track down where a bad part came from. And finally, we have here two light gray 2x2 two two tiles. The one on the left isn't completely blank, like the black plate that we just looked at. It has the Lego logo on it, a couple of random numbers that are not the part number, and what appears to be a very small section where the plastic is either melted or scraped. A couple of Google searches have turned up nothing on what this marking is. I recently acquired a bunch of homemaker parts, and for those who don't know, that was a theme during the 70s and early 80s or a lot of them had this same phenomenon on a bunch of the plates and especially the tiles. 
If anyone out there knows what this is, please let me know. To finish the comparison, I can tell that the light gray tile on the right is the newer one because it has the logo, the part number, and what is evidently the batch number. I hope that this information is helpful to anyone bothered or curious about period specific pieces. So to actually answer the question, there were several pieces, probably between 10 and 15, that were not the period specific pieces. One of them was actually not even Lego. However, they were very common pieces and I was able to fill in all the missing pieces with parts from my own collection, except for two pieces. One of the bases of the vehicle and uh, the cowboy minifigure, if you want to call him that, the gentleman wearing the cowboy hat is supposed to be black and the one that was included in, in this set was brown. Those are the only two, the vehicle base and the black cowboy hat. So I've asked the seller if they happen to have those. And I also asked the seller if they pieced this set together from other parts. And interestingly enough, while I was working on this video, the seller replied and said, and I quote, no, this was a set that I bought years ago that was listed as complete. I don't know the parts like you do. You are a serious Lego person, and I can appreciate that you want original parts. I was assuming that everything was original because that's how it was listed when I bought it. I don't have much Lego left, but I can see if I have any of those parts tomorrow evening. That's a very courteous reply, and I appreciate that, and I'm very happy with the set overall, so I will be leaving this seller good feedback. And just to go over the numbers before I finish this up, the item price was $66. And then after shipping and taxes, it was $87.68 was the final price. And I think that's a really good deal because just looking at Bricklink quickly today, towards the end of October, um, the cheapest one on Bricklink is $89.99. And the seller on Bricklink says, no box set is in good condition, though some stickers are missing. But Exxon branding is there. Thanks. Doesn't mention whether he has the instructions or not. And then the next lowest price is $95.94 from some guy in Australia. Has photos of the set. Few stickers are missing. Most stickers look like third-party replacements. Long gray base plate substituted with two green ones. Nice. Who, who doesn't like having their gas station built on grass? There's one for $110 in U the United States missing the road plate and the cowboy minifigure. And then there's one for $130. That's the fourth highest also in the United States. Missing the box and the instruction. Missing some stickers. So I think I got a really good deal on this if that's what people are selling them for on Bricklink. And Interesting, all the sellers that are selling the set right now on Bricklink, 9 out of the 11 are either in the United States or Canada. Only one in Canada, actually. And that's because this set was, for some reason, um, a United States release only, I guess, because of the Exxon branding. But I think I got a really good deal on that. So thank you for watching. Have a look at some photos of this amazing box, literally oozing with soul. We're building a city, we're building a city, digging and pounding, we're working all together. Building for the teacher, the milkman, the butcher, building for the grocer, the postman too. Building for the doctor, the fireman, the children, building for the newsman, the painter too. We're building a city, we're building a city, digging and pounding, we're working all together.